Now, if you see the governance problem to be addressed in Afghanistan in this way, as coping with the activities of networks of malign actors within the government, not simply as creating better administrative capacity on the part of a benignly intentioned government that's trying to do the right thing but just doesn't have enough stuff to do it yet. How would you go about developing the implementing guidance to direct a more effective undertaking in this direction? And uh, in the interest of time, uh, let's Carolyn, I think, throw her Blackberry at me. I'm, I'm not going to be able to go into tremendous detail. What I will do, however, is to sketch some of the broad outlines of what I think a campaign of this kind would require. And the first business, the first order of business, it seems to me, is if we are going to approach this as a problem of attacking networks, we need to look at it in a way not so unlike the way we would deal with other networks that we mean to uh, disempower. And in a military context in particular, that implies, it seems to me, that there is a certain amount of shaping activity that has to take place before we undertake decisive operations. And the first element of the shaping phase of dealing with malign actor networks as a threat to governance in Afghanistan is to begin with the unbelievably exciting, gripping, thrilling issue of contract reform. I think in many ways a useful metaphor for thinking about the functioning of these kinds of networks in Afghanistan is as a political machine that's doing work for its owners, the hydraulic fluid that allows these machines to do political work for the people who run them is money. Money is what enables the patronage networks that enable the control over activity that enable the taking of private resources for public, uh, public resources for private benefit. The money that constitutes the hydraulic fluid in these political machines is coming overwhelmingly from us. It is not centrally narcotics money, it is primarily the redirection of American contracting and to a lesser extent contracting activities by other international agencies at work in Afghanistan. The first step to make any progress in this undertaking, it seems to me, is shut off the intake valves at the bottom of these pyramidal machines. Reduce or eliminate the flow of American money into these networks reduce the hydraulic pressure in the machine, and as a result, reduce the ability of the machine to do work for its owners. And what that does is to set up a situation in which the coercive leverage available to us to try and bring about the removal or the constraint on the behavior of malign actors could conceivably be sufficient to do the job if first, before we apply the leverage, we reduce the power of the actors and thus their utility to the people above them in the system. If we start instead at the top, as we have tended to do, and we try to get, for example, the president of Afghanistan to rein in or make into an ambassador to the Seychelles, uh, say his younger brother, and the president of Afghanistan believes that his younger brother is performing terribly important political work for him in lining up votes and in at least ostensibly creating security in, for example, Kandahar province, the leverage we have available vis-a-vis -vis the Karzai government wasn't enough to get him to believe that at the end of the day the pain we were threatening is greater than the benefit he was obtaining by not giving us what we wanted and continuing to rely on his younger brother Ahmed Wali and the coercive attempt failed. If we prepare the battlefield first by weakening the key actors, by starting at the bottom and shutting off the money, directing our coercive resources at the next echelon up in the system, those immediately weakened by the reduction in the money flow, removing them and weakening the next echelon, removing them and weakening the next echelon by working our way up the network, we have some potential to deliver leverage that's sufficient to do the job when we reach echelons near the top. Now, 
there are any number of difficulties with this, most of which I'm not going to have time to talk about, but I will at least address one, which is time. If you see the governance problem as being creating lots of trained public administrators that you can then parachute into places like Marja, for example, the, the governance in a box concept, you could imagine, if it was going to work, that it could be done fairly quickly. That isn't actually the problem, therefore parachuting public administrators into threatened areas didn't provide much of a solution. If you see the problem and the solution the way I'm talking about, however, you are not going to be able to parachute a solution into place in the next weeks or months. Because a substantial amount of preparatory activity has to take place, and you then need to work your way slowly up the network, this is a process that's going to take more time and demand more patience of a polity and a political system that has not heretofore been suggesting that they have a great deal of patience for Afghanistan. If, however, we mean to succeed in this, a degree of patience is required not just for the security side to provide stability in populated parts of Afghanistan, the area in which patience has been most frequently discussed, but also with respect to the governance side of the problem, because the effective way of dealing with governance, it seems to me, is not as fast and will require probably as much patience as the security side will. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen.